So um, we had Kitty work with the goalkeepers tonight and it was really good. Uh, we had uh, the three Olympic goalies, so it's a really difficult decision for us to make on who's going to be the, the two goalkeepers next year. So with Kitty, um, we ran through some general technique things uh, at the beginning, so some uh, holding the ball above her head, uh, getting a leg work, her egg beater movement going. Um, really confident in those and found the very, very first exercise really easy and she was catching up to the boys so we might have to see if the women's goalkeeper needs some help there. I think I was stitched up because I think that's the toughest part of the game, the goalkeeper. I was in goals, I saved a couple, lost a couple, got cramp in my toes after the second go, put my shoulder out in the third go so then I had a bit of a rest but um, good fun, really good fun but hard work. Oh look, she's got really quick reflexes, so so good, good for a goalkeeper. Um, obviously, um, needs a lot of leg strength, and so you know that, that obviously comes with time. So, uh, but no, really good. Um, had some shots, scored some goals. Um, I think uh, it was pretty hard to wipe the smile off her face, and and also for her not to claim a couple as well. Look, the water polo boys have never won an Olympic medal. Our girls, we're here at the Wright Aquatic Centre, our girls won gold in Sydney in a fantastic final and they won bronze in, in, uh, in London. So for our boys to get on the podium, they've had a really solid 2015. They came fifth in the World League Finals. They finished eighth, which was probably a little bit disappointing at the World Champs in Kazan, but they lost to the eventual gold medalist by only one goal and in a penalty shootout to the bronze medalist. So, They've had some really good games on the board and a really good solid foundation to build into the Olympic year. Oh, I think anything's possible. Um, you know, we, we have loads of goals. Um, probably the first first goal of ours going to Rio will be get out of the, out of the rounds. Um, you know, to win those crucial early games, uh, to get enough points to go through to the, the semi-finals and the quarter-finals. And then, really, once you get to there, it's anyone's game. Anyone can, on any given day can beat any other teams. Yeah, it's a really good team. I mean, that's clear on and off the water. And you have to be with a team sport like this. And I've never grown up with team sports. I never played a team sport. And to spend time with our team sports, there really is a really special feel within that team. And that's what we're trying to create with our one team, with the whole team. So all 27 sports that we, that we have in Rio, being one big team together. And, and these guys, they've, they've got it sorted. They're a really good team. I think it's, uh, personally, I think it's so important for any manager, chef de mission, CEO, to know their staff, to know what they're working with, so that they can relate to those people. And, you know, what Kitty's doing uh, from a, a chef de mission perspective, um, from the, the team meetings we've already had, to getting in the water with the athletes, it's fantastic. It's, it's really going to create that one team atmosphere. Look, to me, it, it just totally reinvigorates me. It's been, it's been a tough year for everyone. Rio is a challenging environment to prepare for and to plan for, and we're all working really hard. We're all really tired. But when you get in here amongst the athletes with the training session, seeing how hard they work, what we do pales into insignificance and, and I'll go and work doubly hard tomorrow to make sure that we can provide the best environment for our athletes.